Oh, hello there and welcome. Yes, it is that time again for more FileMaker learning and instruction. My name is Matt Petrowski over at FileMaker Magazine. I'm an editor and a developer. And in this video, we're going to be learning about summary fields. And I'm so excited to show you everything that I can in about 30 minutes of what I know. So stick with me. We'll be on my desktop in just a few. All right, so for today's video, obviously, I just mentioned it, summary fields. And here's the obligatory things that I need to tell you just in case you found this video here on YouTube and you're saying, wow, 24, where's number one, two, and three, and four? Click on the, cha the channel icon. It's the little logo that uh, corresponds to my channel. You click on the channel and on the channel page, you'll access all of the um, playlists where you'll be able to go through these series. Now this is series number three uh, out of the three that I've shot. The first one was for environment. The second one I believe was fields and calculations, basically an introduction to fields and calculations. And now we're working through data and structure and we're doing it in a sample database that you can access in the comments or the description area, not the comments, you are going to be able to access a file, and it is the file that I'm going to open up right now on my desktop. It's called Time Track. And we've been building all of the features or a number of features into this database for the purpose of learning FileMaker as we go along. Now there's a couple of files that I've been using, and by the way, I'm using FileMaker 16, but a lot of the things that we talk about with FileMaker work both with 16 and earlier versions and newer versions. Although there are a few features, and unfortunately I don't necessarily mention specifically when it's a version specific feature. If it isn't in your particular copy of FileMaker, then that's probably just bad luck, I guess. Time Tracker is a reference database that I created for myself. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I never really finished it out, and that's what's giving me the opportunity to shoot these series and do it live so that I get a few questions and comments. Now, Time Billing is another file that you can access. It's a FileMaker file. Let's take a look quickly. I haven't done it for a while. You can go to this option right here in FileMaker, here in 16, Get Started. Once you open up that window, we're going to uh, zoom out here and I'll zoom back in. I'll scroll down really quickly. There is an area that says explore the possibilities and ultimately what, what we're ultimately what we're trying to get to is this right here and it is this option time billing. All right, so having given you that introduction, we're ready to get into summary fields and I want to give you I, probably not everything that I know about summary fields. There's so many things to learn in FileMaker and it just becomes more and more of a complex application, but not so complex that we can't do what we want to do. Now, I'm going to refer to this particular database, FileMaker's own time billing database, where FileMaker allows you to come in and specify just straight timestamps. Now this prompted me to create my own file. Well, other than wanting full control of my own universe, like what we all want. This particular method of tracking time really doesn't have too many divisions. You don't see, you can see that you don't have increments on the 15 minute or on the five minute or on anything other than whole hours. So FileMaker sample database was super simple. It also uses this edit feature where once you provide, and I talked about this in a previous video where we talked about uh, the environment section, talking about fields and value lists in particular, and why I don't use custom value lists. As soon as you give somebody the ability to come in and uh, basically select all of these and get rid of them, you've allowed somebody to destroy the value list. So ultimately the solution was for me to create a database which I thought was more uh, appropriate for time tracking, something that just purely uses the timestamp, the timestamp that FileMaker automatically allows us to create. And so each record is a timestamp as opposed to the database over here where we have an actual start time and end time, and then we compute things based on that logic. Now down at the bottom, what we're always going to want to have in most of our solutions is something that gives us a broader picture of the data. 
that comes in the form of a summary field. But summary fields isn't where it stops, not just with a single field type of summary. FileMaker also has functions that we need to be aware of that do aggregations. And that's probably the better word for all of these things. A summary field does appear in the context of a summary, and we'll look at that. But these aggregate functions, because not everything is summing everything up, they allow you to get the data from summary fields in order to do things with it. So let's see what I'm talking about. I'm going to hide FileMaker's database now that we've discussed it briefly. And down at the bottom of my original time tracker database, in all of its glory ugliness, I don't even know if you can use those two words together, you can see that I have a couple of values. I have this value right here, where it is an aggregate of all of the time loaded into the, data, into the current found set. Now, the one thing that we want to know as a FileMaker learner is that a summary field only applies to the records that are currently showing in the found set. So if I was to do a show all under the record menu right here, show all records, this number is obviously going to change. I'll do that with Command J. And you can see that according to my demo database here, I've got a total of 486 hours, 45 minutes, and 4 seconds. So the found set determines, or the summary function uses the found set in order to derive its result. So let's load project 15 again and get back to our found set. You can also see that I have an additional value right here. Now the problem that I came across, and the same thing that's in FileMaker's time tracking database, is that Every, I don't know, this may not matter to you, but in my world, if I'm going to do an extra 15 minutes, I want to bill for the 15 minutes. It's my time. It's the one resource that I have that's in limited supply. I'm born. I die. I want to be able to uh, do the most I can with it. And when I'm working, I'm probably wondering what else could I be doing? Playing, enjoying myself, vacationing. Um, you get the idea. So here are the rates that we have, and I want to bill on a time that is broken down based on a decimal value. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to first need a summary function or a summary field. Then I'm going to need to calculate based on that summary field, and that's what we're going to look at. So this is just a straight global field for me where I've got different hourly rates. And we're going to need to make this a multi-user solution when we build it in, but we need to put in our summary first off. So we need some time values that we can calculate against. I'm going to create a couple of records. I will start that. I'm going to need to back the time off by a little bit. I'm going to give myself at least a good hour before I close this, and I will close it so I have an hour right there. Let's start another one so that we can get our good summary times. And this one, um, let's back this one off uh, just a couple of minutes. And then we'll close this one. And by the way, if you just dropped into this video uh, because of a search and you are saying, my gosh, this is the ugliest database I've ever seen, in this session or this part of the series of videos, we are not even working with layout mode. We are not working with designs. We are not working with anything. This is all data and structure. All right, so let's add a layout part. We go into layout mode and we are going to access the layout part right here. We're going to drag a part out beneath the body part. FileMaker will not let you drag. If I wanted a footer part and I drag that up into the header part, FileMaker will not allow me to do that. As I drop here above the body, you can see that FileMaker only gives me the options of top navigation or a title header because those are the only things that can come above the actual body part. So we need to drag respective of where we want to be able to have a part. And now you can see that we have a sub summary, trailing, footer, title footer, and I'm just going to select footer. And I'm going to click this. Now that we've got our footer, we're just going to replicate what I have in the original database. Now the first thing that we've got is our duration. Duration is being calculated as we learned in the lesson about linking records a little while ago in this particular part of the series that one record, a start record, is linked to a close record, and that's via a parent-to-child relationship, using what I called in that particular video, the starting record is the genesis record, meaning it does not have an ID that relates it to a parent, because it is the genesis. 
then the child record does have that parent ID. You can see that right here, and I'm going to refer you to that lesson if you don't understand how these records are combined. So what I'm going to need to do is do a get some type of summary based on a given record. Now as I go back into browse mode, the difficulty that I have right here, and we've done, we've taken a look at this, is I have two different record time types for a timestamp. I have closed records and I have open records. So ultimately, it's only the closed records that have the time value or the duration that I want to calculate based on. The duration is not going to be calculated based on the start times because they just represent capturing that start data. So I'm going to hide these temporarily here. I'm doing that with the omit command, which we find right here to omit record. So that just takes it out of the found set. If you didn't know, it doesn't get rid of the record, doesn't delete it. So ultimately what I have left now is out of my four records, two of them are showing and they are both my close records. Perfect. We'll have to write a script when we get into the scripting uh, part where when we load, there's so many user interface things that are going on here. We've got some items in our uh, scripts, which I'll bring that up where I showed you, I create a script with a number of comments that allow me to say, here's what I need to fix, here are features I want to add, here's what I want to do, uh, to do in this database, really helpful. One of them will be, we have to choose, in terms of implementing our user interface, what's going to happen when they select a project. We may need to determine the mode. Are they in a billing mode? And if so, then we only want to automatically show all of the close records. No sense in showing the start records. If they're not in a billing mode, then, they're, then they may be in a time capture mode. All of these interface types of uh, questions, for me, they evolve as I evolve the data structure or um, they determine the data structure. So it goes both ways, but in this one, I'm building the data structure first, then I'll build the user interface. So let's add our summary field. We go into our defined database and we are going to add our first summary field. Now in my naming conventions, what I do is I prefix fields with the names that reflect what those field do, fields do in the whole of my database. It just makes things easier. This was evolved back in 2010 when I established the FileMaker standards. So the very first prefix on a summary field is summary, super simple. And I am going to get um, a total, the next word in the summary field, is the type of summary field, which we're going to see. And I'm going to just put the field. So this becomes really easy to understand what this is. I don't have a lot of cryptic uh, prefix characters of uh, CS dash under whatever. If you like to do that, my apologies. Um, nothing against it, but I'm just not a fan of that. So we select a summary field and we create that field. Now here are our options and let's discuss them. First off, you have all of the different choices you can make from all of the various summary types and then FileMaker will limit you based on whether a field is supported or not. We can see by those that are gray. You can also see underneath the field selection that based on what you choose, it will change in terms of options. We won't be able to go through all of those, but uh, for example, with you, when you do a total on a given field, you can do a running total, and that running total will accumulate as sub, uh, summary values are shown when using sub-summary parts. So in this situation, I do want to do a, uh, I believe I want a total of the duration. I can always use my reference. I do not need a running total, and I do not need to restart a summary for each sorted group. Summarizing repetitions, that really uh, deals with repeating fields. And it's typically never a good idea from a data standpoint to use repeating fields for storing your data. We're always going to use a relational structure. Um, so this is a holdover that we don't have to worry about too much as we're learning FileMaker because when we're storing data, we're typically not going to store it for repeating fields. In today's modern development with FileMaker, repeating fields really serve the role of a utility field. Now there's one I want to pay uh, to draw your attention to in particular here, and that is this one, list of. List of becomes very valuable when you're developing user FileMaker interfaces because a list of any particular field allows you in particular to, get, to retrieve a list 
of all of the current ID values for a particular found set. And if you think about this, there's some, a lot of tricks that you can do with this. If you do a find and it finds all of the project seven, uh, project, you know, whatever project records, and then you narrow that down to find all closed records, well, if I get all of the IDs of all of those particular records, that's what this summary function, if I, choose, if I chose the list of, is going to return. Uh, let's scroll to it. So a list of all of the IDs would allow me on a given record in form view, based on the results of a find, show all of those records in a portal. It's a very, very cool trick that you can do in FileMaker. So that list of is very useful in the user interface. Most of the rest of the functions that we have here are going to deal with your data. Uh, list of, of course, can deal with your data, but I would classify this as having worked with FileMaker for a long time. Everything above list of are dealing with my data. List of, I have used it most for my user interface, but of course you can use it for data. So hopefully that's a good little uh, tip right there. So I need to get my duration again and put that on the layout. So now that we have our summary total duration, we can add that to the layout, go into layout mode, and FileMaker conveniently added it for me. Now as a FileMaker learner, if you are not aware of, it, of how summary fields work, a summary will generate its value based on the layout part that the summary field is within. So here being in the footer, the footer as a layout part looks at all of the records that are above in the body part that are shown in the current found set. Now the way that this would differ is FileMaker, when you break, when you find data and that data is found, let's say all of, uh, let's say multiple projects. Let's say I do a find and I find projects seven, nine, and eight, because those are the projects that I want to look at. For some reason, those three. Those three, they're all, when the data comes in, they could all be grouped to together and that data can be in any order. As soon as I sort those records, then they become separate into subgroups of data. So all of project eight, all of project nine or project 11, I forget what projects I mentioned. That's broken down according to a sub summary. So as a new FileMaker learner, if you have not worked with it, if you drag a layout part here as I could put it in the header, actually in the body right here, it would allow me to have a leading grand summary or a sub summary when sorted by. Now the thing that we pay attention to when we select a sub summary when sorted by, that just means that this particular part in the layout is going to reveal itself when and only when the FileMaker data is sorted according to what you select. So in this particular example that I'm discussing, if I put this sub summary here and I said, okay, if project seven, eight, and 11 are loaded. And if I then sort those values based on, and you can see right here, because of my relational structure, we have to remember we're working with keys. I don't have the name of the project stored in my timetable. It's in another table, the table of projects. So I would be storing, I would be sorting typically based on the project ID. But if I did want it to be alphabetical, I would need to go to the project. Let's go manage database and just make sure we always know what's going on. So my context is here, layout time, but I want to sort based on the time value of the um, stop time. I renamed this table occurrence, by the way, it was layout time uh, two, but stop time is what I would want to sort or uh, no, projects is what I would want to sort on, which would be through the globals. So I'd be going through my globals, looking over at my, probably one of these projects, I think. I don't know, it's probably a tangent that I don't wanna go down right now because I would want to think about what's going on while I do it. But note that you are able to select to have a given table sorted based on a field that is many tables away. So let's just see if I would be able to get that portal all projects. I would be able to sort based on the name and I should be able to do that. And we won't wire it up right now because I'm just discussing it. We'll do this at another time when we need that value. Right now we're just going to put it down in the bottom part. So if that sub summary part was there and it was sorted based on project and if I moved this total duration into that sub summary part, 
that subsummary is going to calculate based on the break field. The break is what the sort is broken upon. And in that case, it was broken based on the name of the project. So eight would group all together, nine would group all together, 11 would group all together, and so forth. And the summary field would calculate based on that. So we go into browse mode and we see that we have a value of one hour and seven minutes and 22 seconds. And that works out. We've got one hour, nine seconds, 13 plus the nine and the seven gives us one hour. So it's giving us exactly what we want in terms of the duration. So the summary is pretty easy. I don't think I need to spend much more time on that because adding the field and then putting on the layout is super simple. And you get access to all of those different summary types. And I think you can figure that out. You know, what's the difference between a count, an average of, a minimum, a maximum? Very simple. Let's move on to the next part of what we need to understand because the fields are easy. And that is how do we get, how do we do some math based on this? This is great. But most of the time when I'm going to calculate based on a rate, which we'll be adding in a rates table, I need to do this based on a number. So this is when we need to go into our database and we are going to create a new field. Let's see what I called it over here just for the sake of uh, unstored decimal time. I'll just copy the same value and we'll add it over here. So now that we have the summary field and it's taking a look at whatever data is loaded, we now want to use that summary data. So the, here's the key distinction. There are two ways to get summary data. One of them is via the actual summary field. Another way is via FileMaker's calculations. So many times when you want summary data, you don't always have to use a summary field. However, there are some situations where you have to have a summary field that's generating a value in order to use that within a calculation. So let's take a look at that. We'll add our our, my field, unstored decimal time. I should probably call this decimal duration. And this is going to be a calculation. Making it a calculation field, we are now going to be able to use our summary values. And I'm going to just not take the time to do this off the on the fly in my head because it will take more time than I don't want to take when we can just use my reference database and get right into it. All right, so after that little dialogue hop back and forth there, we can take a look at what we're going to do with regards to our calculation. So first off, what we need to know as I move this dialogue to the side here is I'm going to select here and I'm going to say, I want to look at the aggregate functions. So the suite of functions that allow you to get an aggregate of things without necessarily creating a summary field, if you can access the data, are all of these functions right here where I can get sort of the same things, that total that we had, the average, the count, the maximum, the minimum, they're all here in terms of equivalence of FileMaker functions. So when might you use these? Well, if I have a relationship where I have related data that's being shown in a portal, I do not have to create a summary field over in the related field in order to get summary data. All I have to do is within the same table, let's say in the timetable right now, looking at all of the closed records, if I wanted to total those up or sum them up or get the maximum uh, longest hour worked or the minimum hour worked or if I'm into statistics, standard deviation or variances or get a list, the list function you can see is almost equivalent to the summary function list of. Well, that's where I would be able to use these functions. If I wanted to across a relationship, just get the average, I would simply be able to use the average function without creating the summary field. However, there are times where having the summary field allows you to get that summary and do it based on a different break. You can see that right here, we are doing that with this function of get summary. Now I need renamed this, so I'm going to need to change this so that it matches my database. And we need to look at this function in particular and that should calculate out. Let's put in the get summary function and take a look at what it wants. There we go. All right, so when you do have a summary field and you've created that for the purpose of getting these aggregate values, 
in your calculations, you can use the get summary field and then simply directly specify that summary field. But here's the cool thing. The second value right here of break field, typically what you're going to do is the break field is going to match what you might have used in your FileMaker subsummary part in the layout. So for example, I was going to use a break field based on portal projects all, all the way over to name right here. If I was going to get a subsummary of um, the duration value right there. You can do the same thing that you do in FileMaker's layout mode that you can here within a FileMaker calculation, but you get the opportunity to get to use a different break field. So this isn't super common. It's very rare that I've ever done this. In fact, I probably could count on one, one hand the number of times that I've done this used a different break field in order to get a value. In fact, I'd be interested if you're watching this video and you're an intermediate advanced developer, if you've used a different break field within the get summary function, I'd be interested to know how many times people have used that because typically what you do is use the same break that you use in the layout field when you're going to be doing your calculations. But if you're going to use a get summary, you can use the exact same field in order to get the summary value that you want. Um, I don't think I've ever specified nothing and I've never tried it. It might be worth it to see if this will evaluate based on nothing. But let's see what we've got. First off, we know that the get summary is going to get the summary value from the summary field in this case of whatever the found set has. That found set, I'm setting to a variable of time. I can now get the hour of times. And then in order to find out the decimal value of that, I'm just going to take the remainder of however many minutes there are, divide it by 60, that gives me my fractional time, and add that to my hours in order to have that give me the number. Now I'm going to click this, and it tells me right here that uh, I am not going to be able to have, well actually right there it's telling me that I have to have um, the break field. And let's just copy that, so I can't put nothing. So no problem, thank you FileMaker. So you can see that FileMaker by default, this is, as I named it, unstored, going to be an unstored calculation because I can't make a calculation stored if it's referencing a value that's constantly being uh, changed. It's being changed because the found set changes. And as the found set changes, obviously my summary field is different. So with that, I'm now going to be able to do my math. And it is, putting that right there in the layout. I will drag that just down like I have, and I'm going to be able to do my logic. But you can see that we've got our two values now. We have FileMaker doing the summary based on the time. We've used FileMaker's summary function of get summary to get the value of that summary based on the break field, and we're able to get our decimal time. Now we're going to be able to simply do our rates. And I'm not going to put that in this database right now because we are going to be making this database work in a multi-user environment. In this situation, what I've done over here in my original reference, I simply have a straight up global field. This global field says, you know, what rate do I wanna bill? Am I at the $90 rate or am I billing at my $190 rate? And it's going to then uh, calculate a field here, obviously based on that rate in order to tell me what the value is based on the hours that I've worked. Well, we need to think about this a little more critically if we're going to be creating a multi-user database. And the way that it's going to work is we might have a scenario where, we're, where if we were building this as a multi-user database, and this is what you should always do, we're always going to need these values of the decimal time and duration. We know that each timestamp is going to belong to a particular person. If we now expand this out beyond just myself and maybe other users are creating timestamp records, I know that those records will belong to them in terms of their opens and closes. I, <laughs> closes. I now need to think about how am I going to structure this? So this is how the data and structure part, as you evolve a database, you have to stop and pause and think about how you're going to want to store, the, how the data needs to be stored based on the circumstances where the database is going to be used. So you ask yourself questions. I've been doing this throughout the whole series. The question is, if multiple developers are going to be working in this database, are those developers going to be billing at different rates? Yes, they are. Are we going to be billing clients at different rates? Probably not. 
we're going to bill a client at a fixed rate given whatever the project is, but internally we're going to be billing for different, uh, we're going to be paying developers different rates. Do we want to know the difference between those? Yeah, we probably do because if we're managing developers, we're a consultancy, we need to know this developer earned this much versus this much, but we still need to bill the client this much. So I don't believe that the FileMaker database, the time billing data database, which is super simple, is going to do that. So that affords us the opportunity to explore that option in this database. And right now we don't have that data structure. I'll have to build that in and then we'll be able to discuss that. But I think out of all of the things related to summary fields, I've given you a wonderful overview. There's all kinds of little things that you're going to be able to do once you hit summary fields. There's all kinds of really cool tricks. I have a lot of those over at FileMakerMagazine.com where um, based on a sub-summary part that's in your layout, um, you're able to jump to the next subsummary or to the next subsummary without actually scrolling and all kinds of wonderful techniques um, that you can do with this. Um, we talked about the get summary function. Let's take a look at um, the functions really quickly and see if I got all of those. We will add a watch variable and we will go to FileMaker's measly little summary. And you can see that in FileMaker's um, of all of the breakdowns of functions, I was pretty sure that I, there weren't any others. The summary functions subgroup only has one function, get summary. The aggregate functions have pretty much the um, same functions that you have with a summary field. I've, I've told you that you don't have to use a summary field, you don't have to create a summary field in order to use these aggregate functions across portals. And I've showed you how to create a summary field and told you about the list of value and the distinction between the two. I think I've done, I think I've covered them pretty well. So let's see if anybody has any questions about summary fields with regards to what we've taken a look at today. We'll switch to our video chat here and open up our questions, see if anything came in. All right, I know that my comments up here have to deal with uh, videos. All right, Rana asks, is it always very difficult to me to ask uh, to attend a live here in Pakistan starting time, but I have no problem following up video regular. Uh, so not actual question, but uh, yes, for those of you that are not actually um, local time, 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, hopefully the replays are working out for you, um, but uh, it should work out. Hopefully the capture is good on this question. The video is buffering endlessly. Um, it may be you need to refresh. Whenever YouTube, I know sometimes a page gets stuck, uh, refresh the page on that. You are, uh, you are using prefixes for which fields only? Um, pretty much the predominant prefixes that I use are these. Unstored for unstored fields, summary for summary fields, and then if a field is used specifically for the purpose of displaying in the user interface, meaning it really doesn't have to do with my data and structure, I use the prefix of display. And hopefully that answers this uh, particular question. Primarily, the objective is to distinguish, because I call FileMaker a ball of wax application, because everything is commingled. You have user interface fields commingled with your data fields. The primary objective when naming your fields is to separate the two. I want to know which fields are purely my data fields and which ones are used for the purpose of facilitating the user interface in FileMaker. And that's usually summary fields, unstored fields, and um, display fields. If you can distinguish between those two, then you're reducing the cognitive load that you have when you're working in the script workspace where you may be doing an export or an import and you just want to know what are my data fields because typically pulling data in and out of a database only deals with your data fields. You're not dealing with your user interface fields. So because we have them commingled in the FileMaker environment, that's the distinction that we want to make. All right, great video. Thanks, Matt. Uh, when we have a lot of records, summary makes navigation very slow. This is an excellent uh, comment right here. If you are watching this video and you are um, dealing with the slowdown of FileMaker, there are two things that predominantly slow FileMaker down. One of them is summary fields, especially if they have to do a lot of work based on a lot of data that's loaded. The second thing that really slows FileMaker solutions down are a lot of unstored fields that have to do a lot of computation. So the big takeaway here is 
Anytime that the data is not raw, anytime that FileMaker has to show something where FileMaker has to do a lot of work to compute a lot of things, that's when FileMaker is going to get slower and slower. Now, the distinction between a um, beginner, uh, early intermediate, and somebody who's later intermediate getting into advanced is going to plan and structure their data, and they're also going to structure their processes so that they don't rely on FileMaker as much in order to get the results that they want. And here's your example uh, regarding this particular situation. If I know that I need a summary field, and that summary field is going to be based on data that is constantly changing, and every time that the user comes into the database and looks, or I go to a layout and a find is performed and a subset of records are shown, I know that pretty much I have to use a summary field. However, if the data is historical data, let's say the data represents all of the invoices that were created in the month prior. If that's the case, I'm not going to use a summary field because I don't want FileMaker to have to make the effort in order to calculate that because it's all data that already happened in the past. It's not data that's being refreshed and updated. So we have to think about this strategically and think, is there a way that I could automate the process so that if a user pulled up this data, that if they pulled up the data from the previous month, this summary value is just there, it's already stored. And that's what we do. We write a routine that will go generate that value, that sub-summary, or that summary values, and then store those summary values into a field for the purpose of dis display. We won't use FileMaker's summary fields in order to calculate on the fly because that data is not going to change and it's already happened. And if you do that, then you get into what are known as server-side scripts. And when you run a server-side script, you improve the performance of your FileMaker solution because now you're determining, do I really need to have FileMaker calculate this or do can I take the, the discipline upon myself and make this something that's stored and calculated so that when it's just used for reference in the future, it's just really fast. And that's going to be the distinguisher, the distinguisher between um, a lower intermediate uh, beginning developer and somebody who's starting to head towards advanced. They're starting to wrap the, the whole of the environment of FileMaker around what they need to accomplish rather than relying on FileMaker. And that's the downside to FileMaker. Uh, users will develop a really awesome solution. They put in all of these this cool functionality that FileMaker gives us, summary fields, unstored calculations, and they just add more and more and more but they don't know about system design. They don't know that these things are going to cumulatively over, the over time make your database slower and slower and slower and slower. So we have to think about that as we develop. In this particular case, this database is pretty dynamic, but let's say once we've generated reports, I'm not going to rely on FileMaker summary fields and I'm not necessarily going to sprinkle them all over my interface because I know I want things to be super fast. So hopefully that's a, a good little discussion right there about can we avoid uh, this by activating summaries only when we need them. Yes, you can. You're just going to have to programmatically do it, and it's totally possible to do. All right, so that was my last question, which was good for now because we can switch over to my closeout. All right. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. As always, you can subscribe here on YouTube and you'll be notified. Click the little bell icon and you'll get those notifications. You can always sign up over at FileMaker Magazine. The next video in this series will show up right here. And if you have any questions or feedback, go onto my channel. There's a discussion tab. You can ask them there. You can also ask them in the comments. So much luck to your own for your own FileMaker development. And until next time, happy FileMaking.